a warm welcome from me. I see many people here I know. So um, that was very nice that you mentioned what SMI means because I always called it SMI. I never looked it up and I did it 15 minutes ago to make sure that I know what I'm talking about. But um, superb microvascular imaging, um, a new technique uh, linked to Doppler. So um, first trimester ultrasound um, is um, for us here as specialists more a routine, the first anomaly an scan and it's not speculation and it's not uh, something for the future is there and we know that we have a very high detection rate in the first anomaly scan so it's part of our daily routine um, and of course um, Everybody is talking about or have talked about first trimester screening and so the question for the audience is uh, what is what is longer there first trimester screening or first trimester anomaly scan and you can guess when I ask you that the answer is of course the ultrasound was there first so first papers published about first semester fetal echocardiography were published in the 90s almost 30 years ago. Um, major work from Uli Gembruch and also from Israel, a lot of work done 30 years ago, well before first semester screening hit the market. So um, it's standard for us. So when I do first semester ultrasound, um, what, I what, what I do need for in that time? Of course I need superb grayscale ultrasound. I think uh, everybody's sitting here knowing that the Canon system are very capable of that, so we want to talk about that anymore that's done. Then you need color Doppler or advanced dynamic flow to increase that. You need your spectral Doppler and I will show you through some pictures how SMI can improve the quality of your first trimester ultrasound. And um, I'm working in a private practice, so uh, what you will miss in this talk are pictures like that. This is fake news. Why is this fake news? This is a fancy breast ultrasound scanner with absurd high frequencies I use for brilliant four chamber views in the first trimester. But in my cohort of patients, I cannot use that regularly. So what I'm presenting you is uh, our pictures uh, from the real world and even from, from the patients which are technically difficult to show. So, um, what, what we are using for SMI nowadays is, will change our perspectives of first trimester screening. Uh, just to, to show you some, this is an easy thing to do to look for a circulus velisi. Basically in the first trimester our cerebral exam is very basic to be honest. Of course because the anatomy hasn't developed so far but also because our insights with ultrasound are limited. I think with SMI we will enhance um, our idea about first trimester screen, especially in uh, the part of the brain. And you can see that also in an um, anterior posterior view, you see the cerebral arteries, even posterior arteries and uh, anterior arteries, and you have seen the middle cerebral artery in the last video clip. So even uh, you can try to display the coronary view with the uh, uh, pericolosal arteries. Uh, of course there is no corpus callosum so at that time so it will develop but you can already see the, vasc va the, the vascular ring there. So this is very easy. So in your daily routine what's important? First trimester routine, localization of kidneys, um, unilateral agenesis of a kidney is not so rare. Um, so you can display that in grayscale and if you have a better a worth resolution, you cannot see them, you can take color Doppler or advanced dynamic flow Doppler to visualize the renal arteries. And if you have problems with that, you use SMI just to clarify the situations. But in the case you're using SMI, you see much more. You have to relearn, rethink your anatomy, especially in the first trimester, because there are, of course, much more to see, like mesenteric arteries and stuff like that. Even in the placenta, it's easy to depict uh, the umbilical cord 
uh, I think that's a very important thing. Um, we shouldn't miss, and we can judge about vas vascularization of the, of the placenta, and uh, we can do that in the first trimester, in the second trimester, and I think it will, it helps us in evaluation of adherent placenta or placenta accreta. And of course, the fetal heart, uh, I cannot, you know, when I'm going through the fetal, fetus in the first trimester, I have to talk about the fetal heart. Um, so the fetal heart is, uh, is very good, accessible in the first trimester. And of course, you, you use your high definition advanced dynamic flow Doppler for delineation of the septum. And you can even depict the umbilical, uh, the, the venous return to the left atrium. But when you do so, of course, with the normal color Doppler, you have to fiddle with your settings. Everybody knows that you have to decrease uh, your PRF, you have to increase the gain, and then you produce pictures like that. So my workflow nowadays is just with the basic setting of the color Doppler, I just switch to SMI and I can see the pulmonary veins very clearly in many, many, many cases, as you see these bows here coming into the right, in the left atrium. So this is very easy and enhances my blood flow. This is a typical view, three vessel view, you know that. Um, our uh, most important um, thing to show, and this is a very bad angle, of course, for color Doppler to visualize um, a possible aber aberrant right supplement artist when you want to display the, the arteries deriving from the order. When you use SMI, it's much easier. You don't have to reduce the PRF and fiddle like that, like here, you see that. You just can switch on PRF, uh, you can switch on SMI and then you see the vessels branching of the aorta, um, depicting that there is no aberrant right subclavian artery. So, uh, with the fetal heart, it's very easy to see a lot of details, and there SMI very, really strives. You see that again here with a normal advanced dynamic flow, the blood flow compared to SMI blood flow. You see the venous return in the left atrium, and then here the vessels from the aorta in a perfect way in, in a really high resolution. So this is 12 plus weeks. So that works very well. And even the aortic arch with the branching of the three vessels, it's very easy to do that in a lot of patients in that quality. That works very, very well. So some cardiac defects, you see that this should be an atrioventricular septal defect. And of course, you use color Doppler to see that you have this typical V-shaped influence uh, in, the, in the ventricles. Um, but when you see that in the three-vessel view, this helps you in uh, diagnosing the aberrant right subclavian artery very easily. You don't have to fiddle around with your settings. It's right there. You hit the button and you see the right of this, uh, this aberrant right subclavian artery. So this makes things easier, I think, and faster because you don't have to turn the knobs so heavily. So when you look on cardiac defects, like here in a um, very abnormal heart, you see the left ventricle is very small and the right is, very, is, is more normal, so this should be a, left, a hypoplastic left heart complex. You use the advanced dynamic flow for your routine, and you see just one big vessel uh, deriving from the, from the heart, and it's difficult to say where it's coming from, and the SMI flow helps you to, uh, to figure out that this is a fancy hypoplastic left heart with a uh, abnormal aorta um, pulmonary artery uh, coincidence. So finally, I, talk, I shall have, have shown you pictures, of course, from ladies where you assume that they are slim and low BMI, but in my cohort, I have some patients which are different. Uh, as you know them all, the BMI of 48, and you see the grayscale, that's what you're expecting. We, you know, we can twist physics from transabdominal, so what happens with uh, color Doppler and SMI, you see the color Doppler there and at that, with that lady, that works very well. 
I would say. You can distinguish for chamber view. And uh, I think that's workflow for routine. That makes you happy when you can get rid of this patient by good diagnostic. And even SMI works. And uh, you can see the inflow. And uh, also, when you're used to SMI, you even can depict the, the venous return to the left atrium. Another thing is, so of course, because of first trimester, we are just starting at 11 plus zero. And everybody knows um, I normally bite in my desk when my, when my people scheduling me patients 11 plus one or something. Normally, it's, you know, they're on vacation for three weeks and they just can come at 11 plus one. But, you know, I hate that as everybody is doing ultrasound. So um, this is different. So this is 10 plus four weeks. And even there, uh, the SMI can give you a four-chamber view. And uh, when you have patients from remote areas, they have to travel a lot, and you don't want to send them home for coming back in two weeks. This will help you to, do, to get the job done, even in very early gestations. Still, there, it's a scan through the fetus, cerebral than the heart. And even here, you see the umbilical arteries. And that's what I want to show you. You see the two umbilical arteries, and you can differentiate very nicely from the femoral arteries. So that's one of the problems missing single umbilical artery is sometimes you're misinterpreting, misinterpreting a, a femoral artery other than left or right umbilical artery, and this is almost un, not possible with SMI. You have a very clear... Um, image here, and even you, you see the caliber difference between the umbilical artery and the, and the femoral artery here. You can see that on both sides. This is very easy. So this was a quick stroll through SMI, and so what ha finally what I would say there is um, what I do nowadays is I, I do my normal homework with color Doppler or advanced dynamic flow. And when I want to display small vessels like um, the subclavian artery or, or the venous return to the left atrium, then I just switch on my, uh, my, uh, my SMI button. I don't fiddle around with PRF and gain anymore. I just hit the button and I get the job done most of the time. And it's then, for me, it's faster, better, and I can especially display the structures with low blood flows, and that's the reason it works perfectly in the first trimester. And finally, uh, it even works with high BMIs for special patients. Thank you. And to, to prove that we are, that it's not just fancy pictures, of course, we have a live scan over there, and I might, might be some questions. So this is uh, a late first trimester, ultrasound. Um, I mean, uh, I don't have to talk about the resolution of the grayscale. It's uh, obvious and works very well. And... So this is uh, the, f the lie that normally you don't like very much. You have no chance for a profile because it's looking towards the placenta. So we hope it will turn a little bit so I do everything else. So you have this uh, fetal head there. You go down to the base and And you see the circulus will easy. It's very easy. You see that? It's complete. Uh, uh, SMI is uh, almost angle independent. You can see the middle cerebral arteries. The anterior arteries, you can assume that they're there and the connection. So you have the complete vascular ring there. Uh, I think that's, that's amazing. And maybe there may be some ideas of research in the future. Uh, I think that displays very good the capability of SMI in, in low flow. See, even the in a very bad angle, uh, almost transverse to the transducer, you see the posterior 
civil arteries there. So that works very well. Then, of course, uh, I jumped to the kidneys because that's a favorable lie for that. You see two kidneys even in, in grayscale, but when you want to assure that you have it, that's very easy to do. You see with SMI, you see both renal arteries, renal arteries there, bifurcation, aorta. That's very easy and very fast. So I'm done with that. I don't have to use color Doppler for that. I even jump color Doppler for these things. And uh, if the fetus would be in a different position, I know, then we do. So this is uh, turned a little bit. it for the fetal heart. So even grayscale, nice for chamber view. Even you see the aorta there coming from the left atrium. You see the aortic valve, the crossing of the artery, the pulmonary artery, the three vessel view in grayscale. You see the aortic arch in grayscale, but when you do you use uh, color advanced dynamic flow with fancy luminance imaging if you want to. You don't have to. You can use the regular version if you like to. So you see the, the quality of the delineation at the, at, at the septum, the ventricular septum, that works very well. And uh, the three vessel U. And now you see you get problems with the angle sometimes. So when you use the SMI there, you see the three vessel view, and it helps you in displaying the pulmonary, the pulmonary veins to display them. And in the outflow tract, you see the three vessel view. And there, the vessels deriving from the aorta on both sides. There is no arsa. You see, this is left, this is right. So from the aorta to the left side and to the right side, the vessels deriving from the aorta very easily. You don't have, I, I haven't touched a lot at, at the, the, the screen. I didn't turn any knob or so. I just used SMI as a supplement to color Doppler. Of course, you have normal color Doppler three vessel view. And we have to go back because it's moving again. So, so I try to I try to give you the aortic arch. And you see that on this apical four chamber view. Uh, this is always a challenge for color Doppler because of the resolution, the temporal resolution. And when, I, when I'm switching to SMI, you see suddenly you have this pulmonary vein coming up to, to the left atrium here and the other one there. So we do really with SMI, we do quality second trimester fetal echo in the first trimester. And the angle is not good enough for the aortic arch in that way, but uh, you see the resolution will give you the chance to, to bring it all. So. Is there anything you'd like to see or like uh, Martin Grab to show? So, and even so, when you'd want to display the, the ductus venosus, of course, you can do so with a normal uh, advanced dynamic flow, and uh, you get a very nice overview using 
SMI for that. And just by the way, without purpose, you see the Arctic Arch with the three vessels deriving with the ductus venosus there. You see the tiny ductus venosus entering in the inferior vena cava. So this is not possible with any normal color Doppler, advanced dynamic flow or whatever. It's this extremely high re resolution. So you can, I think this is very important even when you want to rule out early um, abnormalities in terms of vessel misplacement like missing inferior vena cava or something like that. That seems to be very easy with this technique even in the first trimester. Okay.